Was it a robbery? Kelvin Cater versus Josh Emmett ended in a very close, controversial decision, which I initially thought was razor thin, could have gone either way. The first two rounds were so close. The third and fifth rounds were pretty clear. Third round went to Josh Emmett, fifth round going to Kelvin Cater. But how did the judges see this? They gave Josh Emmett the fight. He won this by 48-47 on two scorecards, Chris Lee and Sal Diamato, everybody's favorite judge. While Doug Crosby scored it 48-47 for Kelvin Cater, every single judge gave the first round to Josh Emmett. Two of the judges gave the second round to Kelvin Cater. Third round to Josh Emmett. Two of them gave the fourth round to Kelvin Cater. And every single judge gave the fifth round to Kelvin Cater. So according to the judges, the disagreed rounds were the second and the fourth. But after reviewing that fourth round I don't even see how it was even argued that Josh Emmett won it Kelvin Cater had like multiple of the biggest strikes of that round and we're talking about that spinning back elbow that landed clean and the right straight as Emmett was looking to spin that rocked him there was nothing in that round that came even close to that it was a big error on Josh Emmett's side so I don't even know what that one judge was looking at in fact I and many believes that the first and the second rounds were the most controversial. Texas is a little bit different how you score fights. They did not adopt the new rules. They judge fights based on the old rules. Very weird. I have no idea why they do that. I don't know why they're not up to date. They're sticking with the old stuff that frankly nobody wants such as things about grounded opponents is different where if anything on your body touches the ground besides just your feet you are considered a grounded opponent in the new rules you need to also have both hands on the ground not just one for an example but in terms of scoring a fight based on the judging criteria it's actually almost the same exact thing except there's more interpretation to everything because they don't really define what a takedown is 10 10 rounds are easier to score the old rules also go by a what they describe as a sliding scale which means effective striking and effective grappling are the absolute number one things you got to look at if those are equal then you go to aggression and octagon control a little bit of a difference is that you score both aggressiveness and octagon control together if effective striking and grappling are equal and effective striking is pretty much described as the same way the heavier strikes that have visible impact on the opponent will be given more weight than the number of strikes that lands they say that if the opponent appears to be stunned from a legal blow causing an opponent to stagger appearance of a cut or bruise from a strike and causing the opponent to show pain that's gonna be heavier on the judging than how many strikes you landed. There really was no effective grappling, so we don't have to go to that at all. So pretty much, damage trumps everything, and to get the most accurate description possible, we're gonna be categorizing every single strike in accordance to damage. Let's get right into it, man. Starting off the round, Kelvin Cater leaps in there with a lead uppercut that just touches Josh Emmett. Not much power in this, just to find his reach in an inactive round. Then they both exchange jabs on each other before Cater lands a big leg kick on Josh Emmett that takes his stance away. This was a powerful leg kick, and I wonder why Cater stopped going to them after this. Jab from Emmett, and then after he was able to slip on the outside of Cater's punch to line up a big right straight that gets a good reaction out of Cater as it shakes Cater up. And then Cater responds with a big attack of his own, lands a 1-2 combination, the right hand also shakes up Josh Emmett. So already we got two heavy strikes that landed in the first round. Another light jab from Cater, and then Emmett lands a big leg kick which takes Cater's balance away. Following up after this, Emmett rushes Cater and just grazes with the back knuckles of his fist, which is the weaker part of a punch. No real impact with this punch. And then Cater lands two jabs on Josh Emmett, the last one, and she has a considerable amount of impact, and this is very important. It opens up a cut. And remember what the rules say about effective striking. If you open up a cut from a single strike, that is deemed a heavier strike. So according to the judging criteria, because he opened up the cut and the impact from the blow itself, snapping Emmett's head back the way it did, we might have to categorize this as a heavy attack. Then they both land on each other, Emmett lands a leg kick, while Cater lands a slight left hook. And then trying to get the advantage here, Josh Emmett goes forward and slips on the outside of a jab and starts blitzing down with the combination. His left hook gets partially blocked, and that is why it didn't have much impact. The rest of the punch is missed. Cater retaliates later by darting in with a right straight, that hits Josh Emmett hard. 
Emmett puts together a combination landing three left hands. He starts it off with a jab. He missed all of his right hand follow ups, but he did land another left hook to the body and a slight left hook around the guard that gets partially blocked. The body shot was definitely the biggest blow of the combination. After trying to trade with each other, Josh Emmett is the one that lands with a left hook that hits with the back knuckles again. If he had better accuracy with these punches, he would have much more devastating effects here. But because he keeps landing with the back knuckles, which is the weaker part of your fist, the impact is just not the same, but this one is definitely going to be a medium attack. They get into the clinch and Cater lands a knee to the body while Emmett ends the round with kind of a forearm slash bicep to the head. He was trying to land the elbow, but he landed with the forearm first, then the bicep and shoulder area, and then the elbow kind of glances in there. So telling up all the damage, they are virtually even. 7-7 seven to seven light strikes, 1 medium from Cater, 3 medium from Emmett, 3 heavy from Cater, 2 heavy from Emmett, and Emmett landed 1 strike more totally. There could be a give and take with some of these strikes, such as, you know, which one's heavy, which one's medium. If we want to talk about that jab that opened up the cut and snapped Emmett's head back as a medium strike, because a lot of people don't think that a jab can hurt someone like that, if you do so, you might have to actually go to effective aggressiveness and octagon control, which Josh Emmett pretty much won in that category. Category. But if we go by what we see and according to the judging criteria, Kelvin Cater should slightly win. Now, there could be a disagreement on some of the strikes here, such as this elbow that Emmett landed on Cater. Some people might not say it's a heavy strike. I put it as a heavy. Some people might say it's a medium. So this one's going to be up in the air. It's such an even round. According to effective striking, just to be fair across the board, we'll go to aggressiveness and octagon control, and through that, we have to give the round to Josh Emmett. Emmett wins the first round very slightly. There's always an argument that Cater won this round, which means the entire fight lies on the second round. We start the second round, and Josh Emmett lands the first two jabs of the fight, but then after, Cater eventually responds with two jabs of his own, and then Emmett tries to counter that last jab by grazing a left hook. Cater grazes a front kick to the face as Emmett also partially blocks it. They exchange jabs on each other, and then Cater grazes behind the ear with an overhand as Emmett responds, retaliates with the right hand as Cater is moving away from it, decreasing a lot of the impact. So far, nothing really landing clean. They again exchange jabs jabs and Emmett lands a decent leg kick and Cater retaliates by trying to get in a right straight missing it and as Emmett is looking to counter Cater tags him pretty clean with a back fist. Cater follows up with four jabs and one of them was actually much bigger than the others. This one definitely has a great amount of impact and Cater afterward puts together a combination, lands a left hook and then a lead straight uppercut that pops Emmett's head back before landing another jab afterward. Emmett finally lands some of his shots. He lands a decent left hook to the body but kind of whips into the punch instead of putting a lot behind it and then throws a right hand which Cater actually blocks but the impact seems to get a little bit through. Doesn't really get a good reaction out of Cater, but we will count this as some sort of strike, as it does seem like some of it got through. Cater then lands a right hand over Emmett's jab, which gets partially blocked and doesn't really have much of an effect. Emmett blitzes Cater down, switches into a left overhand that lands, pumps in a very light jab, and then also lands a right overhand over the guard. Seemingly, none of them really have too big of an effect on Cater, but the overhands definitely are medium strikes. Cater lands another big jab that snaps Emmett's head back. Emmett responds by by pressuring forward heavily and throwing a right straight that again gets blocked by Cater's hand but the power goes through. Cater lands two more jabs, one of them could have actually been pretty devastating because Emmett turned into it but only if Cater landed cleaner. Emmett then lands a four punch combination and he puts a lot of power into these shots. He grazes an uppercut, lands a pretty good left hook to the body, his left hook up top gets mostly blocked. Andy lands an overhand over the guard, but can't dig in all the way through because of Cater's guard. And that is ultimately why a big shot like that didn't really phase Cater too much. A jab from Emmett, Cater glances an overhand above Emmett's ear, very similar to the way that Conor McGregor hit Dustin Poirier in their first fight. And Emmett shows to have a little bit of a reaction afterward. Cater lands two good jabs, Emmett glances a left hook as he blitzes forward, and ends the round with a partially blocked left hook. So by tallying up all the damage, it's another very close round. They have an even 16 to 16 light strikes. Cater edged them by 5 to 4 in medium. No heavy strikes in the entire round. And Cater had one more strike compared to Emmett. 
Now, even though the damage is not that far apart, when you watch the medium strikes of Cater, even though you can't say they're heavy, his medium were definitely bigger than Emmett's medium. Some of the overhands that Emmett was landing on Cater didn't really have the same kind of effect when Cater was hitting him with his own jabs and overhands and stuff. There was a different kind of impact that the judging criteria defines when Cater was hitting Emmett compared to when Emmett was hitting Cater. So if I were to spread out how damaging just the medium attacks were, all of Cater's medium attacks were heavier than almost all of Emmett's medium attacks. So because of that, we're gonna have to give the second round to Kelvin Cater, and that goes right back to the question. Did the judges get this decision correct? They did not. I would not say it's a robbery by the general definition, because it was very, very close. You can always run arguments for Josh Emmett to win the fight, but if you want to be as objective as possible, you're going to have to give the fight to Kelvin Cater, winning this by 48-47, arguably 49-46, because that first round could have easily went to him. It's easier to argue Kelvin Cater won the first round than it is for Josh Emmett to win the second round, just because he did arguably a little bit more damage than Josh Emmett in that first round. So at the end of the day, Kelvin Cater should have won this fight, and from winning the fight, he could have been the next guy in line for a title shot. He should have been up next against the winner of Volkanovski and Holloway, which is going to happen in a couple weeks, and then that fight could have been set up later this year, and Kelvin Cater could have got his first title shot, but because the decision was not correct, Josh Emmett won the fight, and he probably is going to get that title shot, so it was a very important fight with high stakes. I don't think either of these guys would beat either Volkanovski or Max Holloway, I think they both get dusted, but someone needs to fight for the belt, and the winner of this fight made the most sense. So I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you enjoyed my content, make sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.